Jonathan with Iron Mind Hypnosis. I want to say, <laughs> I want to say a couple of things, but I want to say a little bit about micro habits. Now, there's a lot of thinking that that the the way to get things done is to fill up your schedule chock full to the brim of busy, busy, busy. And certainly many people have have lives that are like that, where they're super motivated and they have a huge to-do list and they, they, they take that off. But my understanding of the research is that's not the best way to get started. The best way to get started, if you want to keep doing those things on your to-do list, because being really motivated and, and uh, very focused can get things up, absolutely. And it can also, <laughs> well, you can peter out. But if you want to keep going, if uh, say you've started an exercise thing or you want to start an exercise thing and you don't want to go good for a couple of weeks and then just kind of forget about it. Or it could be any other habit. Maybe it could be a habit with, uh, with your diet and what you eat. Maybe it could be uh, with, with your health, your exercise. Maybe it could be a writing habit if you have uh, something to, to generate. But make a, make a something every day. And here's, they call them micro habits. And honestly, they look like they're placeholders for real habits. And that's fine. In fact, it's perfect. If you want to get in a walking habit, do the smallest, even slightly meaningful, walk and get in the habit of it. Maybe it's uh, for me, uh, when I wanted to get back into a walking habit, I'd had a very, very good long walking habit for quite a while. And then uh, things happened. Uh, things got smoky, uh, wildfires uh, covered everything with smoke. It wasn't healthy to be outside and the habit disappeared. So when it was time to start the habit again, I wasn't sure I even wanted the full scale habit nor had time for it. But I started by walking out to my mailbox. Even if the bay had been busy, even if uh, it wasn't great weather outside, even if it was late, I would walk from my front door to my mailbox and back. I wouldn't even check the mail. Not for this anyway. Although if you want to check the mail, the time aren't going to stop you. <laughs> but I would just walk out to the mailbox because it was something so small that even if I forgot about it to the last minute, I had no excuse to stop. I couldn't go, it takes too long. I'm too tired throw on the shoes, walk out to the mailbox, walk back. Maybe for you, throwing on the shoes might be an impediment. Maybe, maybe that's too big a place to start. Maybe you've got a space in your home where you can walk back and forth X number of times as a specific ritual. And that can be the place you start. Maybe you've got a treadmill or something. And you say, I'm gonna walk on this treadmill for 30 seconds. I hope this gives you some idea of how small a micro habit can be. I think it probably even be smaller. But a lot of people think that the only way to go is to go full force. But start small. And when you start small, start very small. So is that at some point, you know that you would miss your little walk or your little bit of writing, uh, your 
whatever the thing is for you. You know that if you didn't do it on a day, you would miss it. And only when you know that you would miss it, if you missed it, should you increase. In my case, I, I walked out to the mailbox, walked back, touched the front door, walked out to the mailbox again. Eventually it was three times, but only, only when I knew I would miss it, did I increase it. Eventually, it was walking down to the end of the street. And I know that it can be tremendously frustrating when you want badly to live this ideal life Maybe that's even eluded you for some time where you have all these amazing habits at full force and you, maybe you jog or you run a certain amount and you, you lift certain weights or do some other thing and you've got a diet that's just right and your body looks amazing and you're, maybe you're a writer and you're producing all this, this content or maybe you're a blogger, you're producing all this content, you're doing this sort of thing for work and you're studying this other thing. I know. I know very well what it feels like to want to have everything, possibly even years ago. And by all means, if this is the first time you've thought of, you know, actually, I think I would like to turn my life 180 and I'm gonna go do a thing. I'm going to do a great thing. By all means, give it a shot. And if that works for you, brilliant, carry on. But if you've, been trying to, to be your future self for a while. And future self is moving a little more slowly than, than you want to be there. Well, try a different tact. Realize that, that you've already invested years of hopes to get to where you want to be. And I, I know it can be hard, but pick small things because they're, they're the things that work. They're the things that work long-term. You don't want to be your, your amazing future self or have your amazing future habits for one day and then flake out before, uh, before any of it really sees benefits, before, before you get the, the body you wanted or the book finished that you wanted or have, have the clients and customers you want. You don't want these things to peter out. You want solid habits that are reliable, both for you and for others. So you can see the, the impact, the benefits of day after day after day. Week after week after month and years down the road of having these habits impact your life and how you, you are in this world. You want that. You, you don't want just a couple of good days that you have to struggle with all your might to, to do. You, you want to have habits that, yes, they're great for your health, they're great for your productivity, but you'd kind of miss them if you didn't. You want them to be so joyous, so easy for you. And it's amazing the sorts of things that can become easy if you start small. So start small. Take care.